In this video, we're gonna be doing back-to-back -back testing with my turbocharged Miata here with a blow-off valve versus without a blow-off valve. This will get us a really good sound comparison between the two, and it will also give us a feel for driving characteristics with and without. But first, let's get into what a blow-off valve is and what purpose it serves, and then we'll get into what happens if you run one on a car that didn't originally have one, or if you choose to not run one on a turbocharged car. So what is a blow-off valve? To understand what a blow-off valve is and what its purpose is, I'm going to quickly go over what happens on a turbocharged car. A turbocharged car has your turbocharger, which is basically a device to force more air into the engine than if it were naturally aspirated. This means that it's literally forcing air and compressing it on the way into your engine, so you could push more than atmospheric pressure air into it and make more power. There's a throttle plate on your engine, which is right here, that dictates how much air could go into your engine. When you're full throttle, that plate is all the way open and air could freely flow into the engine at the fastest rate that it can. When you let off throttle and close that plate, all that compressed air from the turbo is going to be slamming into that plate with nowhere to go. And that brings us to the purpose of a blow-off valve. A blow-off valve's purpose is to give all of that air coming out of the turbocharger a place to go when you let off throttle and it's not going into the engine anymore. It's essentially a pressure relief valve to relieve that boost pressure when you let off throttle and that air has nowhere to go. If you don't have a blow-off valve installed on your setup, all of that extra air that was built up coming out of your turbo is going to try to go back through the turbo once your throttle plate closes. This could cause some damage and some reliability concerns, which I'll get into later in this video. But first, let's go ahead and drive this car with my blow-off valve. I'll mic up the engine bay so you could get some really nice sound clips. And then I'll go ahead and remove my blow-off valve and drive it around like that so you could hear what happens without a blow-off valve. This is going to be the first time that I have ever driven this car without one, so hopefully I don't blow this turbo. But for the sake of science, let's go do this. To start out here, let's do a few free revs. Man, I love how that sounds. Now let's go do some light driving so you could hear what this thing sounds like on light boost and light throttle. And now let's do some full throttle pulse. This thing sounds sweet, and with that mic'd up engine bay, you really could hear that turbo screaming at higher RPM and higher boost. Now let's go ahead and disconnect our blow off valve and see how that sounds. But before we do that, I want to recommend that you go check out my Patreon page. Here, you'll get access to all of my videos early, as well as an exclusive chat where you could ask me questions directly about your cars. Now let's get back into the video. Once again, let's do some free reps. With this thing, you really could hear that compressor surging like crazy, even at the really low boost levels that you get free revving it. Now let's go ahead and drive it around. And on that second little pull there, I realized there's actually a bit of a problem by just disconnecting the vacuum line to the turbo. By disconnecting the vacuum line, your blow-off valve won't open when you let off throttle and it's under severe vacuum, but you also don't have the benefit of the boost holding the blow-off valve closed. So that's why you're hearing this extra air whooshing. I tried to not do that, but it does mean I wasn't able to do as high of boost pulls with this blow-off valve just disconnected.
And here's a full throttle pull, but you will note that that blow off valve is leaking boost and it's really not making a whole ton of boost. Of course though, no matter what I did with this test, you could hear that turbo surging like crazy. All right, so that was pretty fun to drive this thing back to back with and without the blow off valve setup. And with that, that's gonna wrap up the sound portion of this video. Now let's go ahead and talk about the science portion of this video. So you have a car and you're wondering what would happen if you put a vent to atmosphere blow off valve on it. Well, if you have a car that's tuned with a mass airflow sensor and you're putting a vent to atmosphere blow off valve on your car, you're gonna have a bad time. A mass airflow tuned car relies on the amount of air that it sees passing through a sensor that's gonna go into the engine. Once you install a vent to atmosphere blow off valve on one of these cars, you're gonna be losing some air once you let off throttle and your engine's gonna be expecting that air to get to it. This means your engine's gonna dump too much fuel in and it's gonna run very rich once you let off throttle. This could lead to problems like fouling out plugs and running rough at idle. In extreme cases, your car might stall out at lights because it's gonna be running super rich and expecting more air, and you could cause damage if you're running a car with this sort of setup. Now, if you're running a recirculating style blow-off valve where the air that comes out of your blow-off valve gets recirculated often behind the turbo but in front of the mass airflow sensor, you're not going to have those problems. Now, this is completely different if you're running a car that is tuned using a MAP sensor or the speed density principle. These cars use the manifold air pressure and the RPM of the engine to determine how much fuel to put into your engine. In this case, you're not checking the actual amount of air that's going into the engine with the sensor, so venting to atmosphere doesn't cause a problem with your tune, and it could run fine with or without a blow-off valve. Again, when you're not running a blow-off valve on a turbocharged car and you close your throttle plate, there's a lot of built-up air pressure in the system that needs to go somewhere. And that sound that you were hearing when I let off throttle when I didn't have the blow-off valve hooked up was the air forcing its way back through the turbo and putting a lot of extra force and stress on the turbo components. This could cause premature wear to the turbo's bearings and again, in extreme cases, the compressor itself. Also, you could damage your intake piping or other components by not running a blow-off valve. Now with all of that said, there are a few reasons why you might choose not to run a blow-off valve on your car. The first one that's probably most applicable to you is you simply like the sound of not running a blow-off valve and you prefer that to the sound of a blow-off valve. Again, this is fine, but just know that you may be causing premature wear to your turbo. But with that said, turbos have come a long way and there are turbo manufacturers and different housings that you could run on your turbos to prevent that compressor surge when you let off throttle. In a lot of cases with cheaper or older equipment, if you want to 100% protect it, run a blow off valve. But again, this is up to you to do your research on your specific parts. And with all that, that's going to wrap up this video. Again, don't forget to let us know down below what car you have and whether or not it has a blow-off valve on it. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it. Go over and check out my Patreon page to get those exclusive benefits that I talked about earlier. Subscribe for more, and I hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.